Halo's universe, the human race is often faced with impossible odds and foes who use technology far beyond our reaches to burn mankind's settled worlds to ash. While most Covenant foes can be found using the plasma rifle, needler, or plasma pistol, some Covenant take a more cautious approach, hitting their targets from long range with something of an analog to the UNSC's own battle rifle. In today's evolution video, by popular demand, we're going to be taking a look at the Covenant carbine. From the gas mines of Threshold to the online battlefields of Halo matchmaking, this is the evolution of Halo's carbine. If you enjoy the video, consider sharing with your friends or pets, and what weapons or vehicles would you like to see covered next? Before we do that though, it's time to pay the bills. I forgot my shopping list at home. Do I have enough cleaning spray? Oh, it's you! You know what's more important than personal hygiene? Proton VPN! What's the one thing we all need in the digital age? Privacy! And Proton VPN is the answer. It's not just a VPN, it's an online cloak of invisibility. Do you love streaming moving pictures that aren't in your native country like Poop River? Catch this, Chad! No problem! Proton VPN lets you choose your virtual location so you can stream content from anywhere, anytime. It's me, programmer! Favorito! Hey, gamer! Put down the mountain dew and pay attention for a sec. You remember the name of like a billion fake Halo guns, so surely you have the ability to remember this! Not only does Proton VPN open doors to gaming services from around the world, it's your secret weapon against skill-based matchmaking systems that prevent you from using servers in other regions. Your gameplay stays smooth no matter where you are. And here's the kicker. They've got a free version. Yes, free. Try it out and see the magic for yourself. So, whether you're streaming, gaming, or just want a more secure online experience, Proton VPN is your digital sidekick, ready to <laughs> level up your privacy game because you're a gamer. Click the link in the description below and head to the Proton VPN website to start your journey to a safer, more secure online experience. Thank you to Proton VPN for sponsoring today's video. Oh, the ad's over. You know what made Halo 1's AI so engaging? Some may say it was the expressive and animated way they moved about the battlefield, engaging players in unique ways that made them feel like more than just simple goons with guns. Please, I don't want the kid. That is true, but I think an aspect that's often overlooked is just how much their excellently designed sandbox contributed to the combat. The developers gave the UNSC weapons like the assault rifle, sniper, shotgun, etc. with fast-hitting kinetic rounds. The Covenant were armed with slower-moving projectile weapons that had longer travel times before hitting their target. The plasma rifle, needler, ghost cannons, name any Covenant weapon or vehicle in Halo 1 and it'll have a projectile system that the player can see coming, giving them enough time to dodge and find cover. This ensured that the UNSC weapons were fun for the player to fire at the Covenant and Covenant weapons were were fun when fired at the player. It was this perfect balancing act. The Covenant and UNSC sandboxes felt different, and not only did it help the game mechanically, it also helped give the Covenant's technology this alien quality due to how differently it handled from humanity's best. For the sequel, things changed. Players could play as not just the Master Chief, but also the Covenant Arbiter. And in order to make sure the combat loop for the Covenant missions included a hard-hitting kinetic weapon that made combat feel fun and fast, the Covenant would need their own analogs to the UNSC sandbox. One of these analogs was the Type 51 carbine, the Covenant's equivalent of the Master Chief's battle rifle. Forged in the fires of the Covenant Holy City of High Charity and then encased in a magenta metallic shell, the Type 51 carbine is an alien rifle through and through. The weapon stock has two unique circular holes and a grip large enough for a variety of alien operators to use, from the meatiest brutes to the scrawniest jackals. 
A holographic display gives the carbine's user a visual indicator of how much ammo is left, and when reloading, the ammo cartridge pops up out of the weapon automatically with an insanely satisfying sound in a way that reminds me of an M1 Garand before a new cartridge is inserted and the weapon is ready to fire. It's a great feeling weapon with satisfying animations, but there is a rather odd bug I can't quite explain with it. I'm cursed with this knowledge, and now I pass the curse off to you. If you fire the carbine and then press the reload button within an extremely short window, the reload animations won't play, and the gun will simply reload itself. Spooky, right? Interestingly, the carbine was mostly built without concept art. According to Bungie artist Chi Kai Wang, the carbine used this piece of old Halo 1 concept art as a basis for the stock, and then a longer barrel was added to give it the profile of a weapon meant for range, and that's how we got the carbine we know today. During its development, Bungie also experimented with many different mechanical ideas for the carbine. At one stage, it was fully automatic with knockback abilities. At another stage, it was a burst weapon when hip-firing. For the final game, as mentioned, Bungie settled on a semi-automatic role, a primary combat weapon excellent for cleaning up jackals and grunts while reserving the secondary slot for a more tactical weapon such as the plasma pistol, energy sword, sniper, and so on. It has an 18-round magazine with a max of 72 rounds in reserve. Interestingly though, depending on the mission, more spare ammo than normal can be held for it. As an example, in the mission Gravemind, freeing a marine from a Covenant holding cell and then taking the carbine that marine picks up will give the player a carbine that has a whopping 120 spare rounds. Considering the difficulty of the Gravemind level, especially on Legendary difficulty, this is a pretty good exploit to, well, exploit. It's great in the Halo 2 campaign. It's honestly the perfect weapon to take on brutes, popping off their helmets and then landing a clean headshot without the natural ammo waste that comes with the battle rifle's burst fire rate. In the multiplayer, the carbine is a different story. Due to the battle rifle's various glitches and exploits that let it overperform, it almost always will beat out the carbine in a gunfight. Long range, close range, doesn't matter. In SMG starts, it acts as a great upgrade from the SMG, giving you a bit more range, and shines a bit better, but for the multiplayer in general, it's hard to honestly justify it when the battle rifle pickups are plentiful as well. As it sits, in a debate about which campaign weapon is better in Halo 2, battle rifle or carbine, the carbine brings some serious pros to the discussion table. In the multiplayer, however, it's often just overshadowed in modes that start players off with battle rifles. Overall, a mixed bag, but certainly one that's elevated by just how much charisma the carbine has. The carbine's journey began here in Halo 2, with a green flash, a dash of magenta, and a satisfying sound profile. Halo found its Covenant Precision Weapon. By the time of the Xbox 360, graphics were evolving at an accelerated rate. The HD era of gaming had arrived, and with it came higher poly counts, more detailed texture work, bigger battlefields, better teabag physics, and of course, a new carbine. The Type 51 carbine of Halo 3 is simply beautiful. The Halo 2 design was kept intact with some extra polygons added to improve the model. It's further complemented by improved texturing, superior material and detailing. Little green glowing lights were also dotted on the sides of the weapon to contrast against that beautiful, colorful shell and give the gun a bit more color variety. The holographic display was also given slightly more detail, and alongside an improvement to the audio quality, the firing effects, shot trails, and impact effects were also upgraded. When reloading the carbine in Halo 3, the animations were improved from Halo 2's with a cloud of gas being vented from the weapon when the cartridge popped out. During this era, Bungie mentioned on their website that the carbine in fact fired radioactive rounds, the first time in the series that this was mentioned, and the implications of this bit of lore were pretty serious. The gun fires radioactive rounds. If an impact wound from a carbine doesn't get you, the radiation sickness just might. Haunting stuff. The Halo 3 carbine is an awesome reconstruction of the weapon, bringing it into the next generation of consoles with the glam, glitz, and lore that it deserved. 
In the game's campaign, the carbine still serves mostly the same purpose as the previous version. It's an analog to the battle rifle, so the reasons to pick it up are more or less subjective, but couple its semi-auto fire rate with the amount of carbines that can be scavenged for spare ammo, and it's still a fantastic weapon to carry legendary runs. In fact, when playing co-op, the second player takes control of the Arbiter in Halo 3, now best friends forever with the Master Chief and armed with his own carbine. This makes the carbine even more accessible as a weapon than before. A learning curve that does take some getting used to is the slower projectile speed in Halo 3 and the spread over distance, but if you can learn how to predict the shot spread and the travel time to your target, the carbine will fit you like a glove. Well, actually, I guess it'll fit more like a rifle that your gloved hand holds. In the multiplayer, the carbine does have more of a fighting chance against the battle rifle than its Halo 2 counterpart, with the slower projectile system I mentioned increasing the gun's skill gap. But let's all be honest, the removal of the battle rifle's button combos helped quite a bit. Halo 3's carbine saw an increased range and fire rate at the cost of slightly less damage. This allows the carbine to be far more useful as a strike force projectile weapon, letting you get the jump on enemies and pump them full of rounds before they have enough time to counter. It shines really well on asymmetrical maps where defending teams can easily hold off attacking teams armed with the slower firing but higher range battle rifles. It feels like the Halo 3 carbine is able to hit that sweet spot that the Halo 2 carbine almost reached. I got a chance to speak to a gentleman named Hoaxer, a competitive Halo player and coach who is known as a carbine whisperer. When I asked him what his favorite version of the carbine was, he said the Halo 3 version. While most players will find themselves going for the battle rifle in competitive tournaments or matches, the single-shot nature of the carbine is something he just likes. He also thinks that the carbine has this indescribable charm to it, the animations, the sounds, and the colorful light show when firing it. Halo 3's carbine is a fantastic incarnation of the weapon, great as always in the campaign for higher difficulty runs and rewarding for skilled players in the multiplayer. A cultural aspect of the carbine that is sadly becoming lost to time as the series approaches its 25th anniversary, Jesus, is that it also makes for a great candy dispenser, as demonstrated by a viral Halo 3 tips and tricks video that was uploaded on October 10th, 2007. CM X-Wing Films expertly shows how the Halo 3 carbine can give you candy if you're hungry. And then repeatedly press the right bumper and be like over and over and over again. Your gun on your screen is going to move up and down really fast, but everyone else candy coming out of it and it tastes good too. It's important to never let this piece of Halo history be lost to time. If anyone ever tries to write off the Halo 3 carbine, ask them if their favorite carbine can dispense candy. ODST was released in 2009, and it was the first time players were put in the boots of the men and women who fought alongside the Chief, the ODSTs. Despite running on the Halo 3 engine and using most of the game's existing systems, Bungie used the game as an opportunity to cut down on the sandbox, which was getting hard to balance for, and return to something a bit more pared down like the good old days of Halo Combat Evolved. Rather than using a battle rifle as their precision weapon, ODSTs could use a small silenced magnum with a long-range scope, but with a drawback, extremely weak damage to armors, bodies, and shields. It's great for opportunistic moments, <laughs> but it's not so great as a gun that can do some serious heavy lifting. That is where the carbine enters the picture. The carbine of Halo 3 ODST is the Halo 3 carbine in every way except for a key difference. It's the most damaging incarnation in the series up to this point. Combine the fast fire rate and range of the Halo 3 carbine with the removal of the battle rifle from the sandbox, and ODST turned the carbine from a niche semi-auto rifle into the ranged utility weapon of the game, no longer fighting with the battle rifle for the player's attention. Stumbling upon a fully stocked carbine is this incredible feeling because, like the pistol of Halo 1, the Carbine is here to get anyone through the toughest of gunfights. 
In many ways, Halo 3 ODST was the closest to the original sandbox formula Halo 1 used back in 2001, with every item having a specific purpose in the sandbox. Preference-based sandbox choices can be fun, but there's just something about a more focused and clearly defined weapon set that makes each individual weapon feel more impactful in the larger hull. And it's a feeling that ODST and its carbines still give me to this day. And it still gives out candy, which makes it automatically better. With Bungie moving on to new adventures in 2010 after the release of Halo Reach, the next mainline Halo game was entrusted to the growing team at 343 Industries. With their new game taking place four years after the events of Halo 3 canonically, they used the time jump as a way to soft reboot the Halo IP, introducing players to a new visual design language, new tone for the story and music, as well as a whole new host of characters and problems for the Master Chief to overcome. As part of Halo 4's marketing, a short film called Forward Unto Dawn was made that made use of many props from previous Halo live-action projects. The Halo 3 carbine, most likely done by Weta Workshop, was given a fantastic send-off, being used by Kyler Silva, an officer cadet, to defend her friends from the Covenant attack on their academy. For the final game, however, a carbine redesign was inevitable. With the collapse of the Covenant Empire, the various aliens of the Shattered Religion formed new Covenant factions, resurrecting centuries-old designs and making do with technology that was, by their standards, incredibly out of date compared to the splendor and beauty of the weapons forged by the Covenant Prophets. One of these many designs that the aliens were forced to dig up from their ancient history was the Type 51 Mosa Pattern Carbine. After four years of absence from the franchise, the Carbine was back, and the work put into updating its design is admirable. 343's artists took the silhouette it was known for and gave it a high-definition spin that focused on detail, depth, and greeble, pushing the Xbox 360 and what it could handle to its limits. The shell of the weapon was now broken up by lots of intersecting lines and parts, upping the complexity while the mostly smooth internals of the weapon were also replaced with more complexity, more lines, grooves, and geometry. Two big glowing lines run along the bottom of the gun to draw attention to the curved shape of the weapon, and the circular holes that were a staple of the gun's odd alien look were replaced with more angular, geometric gaps for the operator's hands. A detail I go back and forth on if I like. The ammo counter up at the top also includes a cool detail. A bit like the UNSC's rifles, the Halo 4 carbine has an ammo counter that ticks down in the Covenant's language till it hits zero. So yeah, if you went to alien school, you'd be able to read those symbols as you use the weapon. As for the animation work, it's a solid step up in quality, but not without some spottiness. In the previous game, the cartridge would pop out of the gun while releasing that radioactive gas. In Halo 4, the canister would pop out of the gun, a new one would be inserted, and then, probably due to anxiety, gas would release. Is this a bug? Who knows? Also, if the game engine is ever under stress, it'll disable certain particles and sound effects. The carbine's stinky gas is one of these effects. The way to fix this problem is a simple reset of the match or loading into a new one, and boom, now your carbine has gas again. Great, now I have gas. There's also a lot of animation interpolation issues with the gun, like this one that'll make it freak out before entering the sprint animation. Usually the 30 frames per second limit on the Xbox 360 masked issues like this, but nope, you can definitely see it. Moving on from farts though, Halo 4 sandbox is quite different from typical Halo sandboxes. It followed a lot of design trends at the time, moving away from more mechanically complex sandbox design and more towards a narrow set of weapon archetypes, such as auto rifles, shotguns, tactical rifles, rocket launchers, etc., to simplify gameplay and make the game easier to understand for fans of other game franchises like Call of Duty or Battlefield. The carbine fits firmly in the tactical rifle slot, alongside the returning battle rifle, DMR, and brand new Forerunner light rifle. It's the weakest of the tactical rifles by far, but don't let that fool you into thinking that it's completely useless. In the campaign mode, it fills a similar niche you're probably quite familiar with by now. 
Though with the extra DMR and light rifle on top of the already existing battle rifle, the carbine struggles far more than any previous game to carve a solid identity or unique voice for itself in combat. It still can absolutely carry any player's legendary run, and when running the game's Spartan Ops mode, the carbine is one of the more reliable firearms to construct a loadout around. Due to its fast fire rate, it's worth using the dexterity perk to speed up reload times, allowing you to quickly dip in and out of engagements with your gun always at the ready. This advice works in the multiplayer modes as well, where the Carbine faces some pretty harsh competition in the Create a Class race. In the early days of Halo 4, the DMR more or less dominated the game's meta with its range, slow fire rate, and heavy hitting shots. It wasn't until a pretty substantial balancing overhaul to the game, dubbed the Turbo Update, that the DMR was reined in and other weapons were buffed up, with the Carbine getting a damage and accuracy buff at the cost of its range. Now, it sits firmly in the close to mid-range tier for online play. An interesting side effect of the way that 343 had to patch these balancing changes into the game is that it acts differently in campaign. The campaign version of the Halo 4 Carbine has weaker overall damage, but more range, while the multiplayer Carbine got more damage at the cost of a reduced range. In general, the Carbine just isn't optimal to craft a loadout around due to the easier DMR and battle rifle. The Carbine of Halo 4 is a fine, if forgettable, companion. It's found in most levels of the campaign, it's a bit under the radar in multiplayer. For me at least, the Halo 4 Carbine deserved better. Now as many of you know, November marks the 10 year anniversary of Halo 2. And I am excited to tell you that Halo 2 is getting the full anniversary treatment. In 2014, it was the 10th anniversary of Halo 2, a time to be celebrated for sure. 343 Industries teamed up with Saber Interactive, Blur Studio, and Certain Affinity to create a complete visual remaster to the big 10-year-old boy. And despite an immense time crunch to get the project done, what Halo fans got was quite the package. For the campaign, Saber Interactive made use of their Saber 3D engine to overlay new graphics over the original game, while making sure the animations, physics, and feel of that game stayed the same. Many assets were remade from the ground up, but a lot were also pulled from previous Halo games and given updated textures, shaders, and materials. For the Carbine in particular, the Halo 4 model was used with the green lights on the gun switched to blue, and new, more punchy sounds and visual effects were added to give it a kick. The Halo 4 was a pretty ambitious game for the Xbox 360 console, and 343 weren't quite as skilled as Bungie yet at hiding tricks to cut down on model complexity. It makes the Halo 2 Anniversary Carbine come off as a bit lower in fidelity compared to other weapons in the sandbox that were pulled from Halo Reach or given new assets entirely. Also, despite inheriting the Halo 4 ammo counter complete with the Covenant's numerical symbols, these are not animated. It also didn't help that the remaster for Halo 2 was not built on the original Xbox version developed by Bungie, but instead the 2007 release Halo 2 Vista, a port of the original Xbox game that, among many graphical issues, introduced balancing problems due to the effects of the increased frame rate. The Carbine's fire rate cap was basically removed by the bump from 30 FPS to 60 FPS, letting players fire it as fast as they could click the mouse. These frame rate related balancing problems weren't corrected for the Master Chief Collection, which which made the promise of the game at E3 that year being exactly as it shipped 10 years ago seem a bit silly. Fortunately, the Carbine makes an appearance in the certain affinity created Halo 2 Anniversary Multiplayer. Unlike the campaign, the multiplayer component was built in the Halo 4 game engine, but with modifications to make it feel a bit like Halo 2. The Carbine used in the multiplayer is, again, the Halo 4 model. Despite the same engine, there are some differences in its view model position, walking animations, and general reload animations. When ejecting the stinky, smelly radioactive canister from the weapon, the canister once again leaves behind that trademark fart, also like an odd thick goo that dissolves in the air. In order for the video to stay monetized, I'll leave the jokes to you, so let's talk about balancing. The Carbine of H2A multiplayer is not quite as helpless as its original 2004 cousin. With its fast fire rate and tight spread, it's a great pickup if you're quick on the trigger, but without being too different from the original game, the battle rifle does put up quite a fight and does tend to put the Carbine in its place more often than not. So if you want to use the carbine, only do it if you're extremely confident in your aim and trigger finger.
Following Halo 4's mixed response from Halo fans and general gamers, 343 took the feedback to heart and tried to figure out how to make both sides happy for their next mainline game. Halo 5 left Halo 4's loadout system in the dust, returning Halo to its even start roots, with a trade-off to court new audiences being the inclusion of enhanced mobility mechanics aiming down the sights and more gravely high-tech sci-fi designs than you can eat. Among the many weapons brought over from Halo 4 was the Type 51 Mosa Pattern Carbine, and it's an interesting weapon within the Halo 5 combat bubble. Not much has changed on the design front. The details and shape of the weapon were kept intact with a greater level of fidelity. Some differences, however, are the change in color palette to better match the rest of the Halo 5 Covenant aesthetic. Covenant stickers are also spread about the weapon in a similar way to weapon manufacturer decals for human weapons, which is a cool touch. But the most noticeable change is to the ammo counter. The holographic pattern that counted down in the Covenant's language was replaced with a flower-like display that shifted from cyan to red as the weapon ran low on ammo, most likely done to help players get a better sense of when to reload the weapon during intense shootouts. Halo 5's carbine also got far more polish and faster-paced animations, with no noticeable animation interpolation issues. The gas effect is also properly played during the ejection of the cartridge like Halo 3 and Halo 2 Anniversary, but it is less pronounced than the effect in Halo 3, probably because of the speed of the weapon's animations. Either way, it's a solid, snappy, and fast-paced set of animations to complement the weapon's new role in combat. Due to the enhanced mobility mechanics of the game, the weapon sandbox had to be heavily simplified mechanically. Weapons were more or less homogenized around a few different traits range, rate of fire, and damage. And it makes sense, with the Spartans zipping and zopping and boost dodge thrust sliding across the map, there isn't exactly a lot of time for complexity or variety within sandbox interactions. They all have to be pretty simple and do their job quick. And this is where the new carbine shined. The Carbine of Halo 5 is by far the easiest version of the weapon in the series to use with generous aim assist, 20 shots per magazine, an upgrade from previous games, and a much longer range than previous incarnations that can be extended further when aiming down the sights to bring up the weapon's new shiny holographic dot sight. Despite how entirely different the two games are, Halo 5's Carbine channels the spirit of the Halo 3 Carbine, adapting its style into Halo 5's more aggressive combat loop. The Halo 5 Carbine is this game's strike weapon, being a ranged weapon useful in most ranges, but benefiting quick-moving players who can lock down lanes, suppress ranged enemies, and if needed, become a quick-moving assassin who moves about the map, taking down targets with the weapon's fast fire rate. It's probably why Hoaxer was also quite fond of the Halo 5 Carbine when I asked him. For the first year and a half of the game's lifespan, the Carbine was a pretty destructive force in matchmaking, so much so that it became a serious issue in the competitive ranked and HCS events. As part of 2017's weapon tuning update, the carbine's effectiveness at range was reduced and its bullet spread was increased so that the weapon excelled more in close range. But even then, the carbine continued to be a pretty powerful pickup in the combat loop. The carbine's presence in the game is expanded further via Halo 5's loot box system, which lets players unlock two extra variants to use in the game's Warzone mode or spawn in the Forge or Custom games. Firstly, the Reign of Oblivion is a fully automatic carbine with an eye-catching yellow color scheme. The fast fire rate makes it an aggressive upgrade to the original carbine. But far more interestingly, the Blood of Suban is a red and white carbine with the unique ability to fire needler shards. The Blood of Suban needs only five shots on a target to make the target explode into a beautiful pink mist. Without a doubt, it's one of the most dangerous medium range weapons in Halo 5's Warzone mode. Its fast fire rate and five shot kill make it an extremely hard to counter weapon. And when combined with overshields to protect the user during during gunfights, it's easy to rack up multi-kills. The weapon's origins date back to the fall of truth in Halo 3. After the Prophet's defeat, two elite brothers pledged their loyalty to the Arbiter by crafting his army a new carbine, inspired by the needle rifles of old. The Carbine of Halo 5 is the easiest version of the weapon to use, and it's even easier to see why folks remember it so fondly. This incarnation of the weapon went on to make an appearance in the fighting game, Killer Instinct, sporting its Halo 4 colors alongside the Arbiter as a playable character. After this, the Halo 5 Carbine made one final appearance, oddly enough, in Halo Infinite. 
when it was discovered by players in the game's files with weird attachments and bits and bobs. I asked a developer friend of mine what they knew about it, and they theorized it was either A, scrapped ideas for Halo 5's rec variants that somehow got left in Halo Infinite's code, or B, this Halo 5 carbine was part of a prototyping period where a Ghost Recon-like modular weapon customization system was being explored for Halo Infinite's open world as an excuse to give players things to find. How it survived in the game's code for so long after the system was scrapped is anyone's guess. So yeah, that's the closest answer I can provide to you as to why Halo 5's carbine ended up in Halo Infinite, but it does make it seem almost like the weapon is haunted ending up in the code of new Halo games for years to come. Despite its rough initial launch, the Master Chief Collection began its slow road to recovery in 2018 with the release of the 4K update on consoles, bumping up the game's resolution, fixing some bugs, and continuing over the years to see a slow but appreciated rollout of patches and eventually PC ports. New content was added to the game as well, such as a progression system with unlocks to chase, a skin system for many Halo titles in the collection, as well as new 2K textures for a majority of Halo 3's weapon and vehicle assets. When you have new skins set to on in the Master Chief Collection, simply not using any skins will load the players with 2K high-quality default skins for each weapon in Halo 3, bringing to life the micro detail in ways that the original 360 hardware simply couldn't. Sometimes it's a subtle upgrade, but for weapons like the Carbine, the upgrade does look nice to me. The fun doesn't stop here though, because the classic Halo 2 Garvine also finally saw its fire rate fixed, now making it operate like its classic Xbox incarnation, a fitting cap off for the Carbine. The Carbine had a good run from 2004 to 2023, being a weapon remembered for its beautiful colors but more gruesome history. Whether you prefer the classic Bungie Carbine design, which recently cameoed in Halo the series, or 343's more high-tech, greebly spin on it, one thing is for sure. The Carbine is a weapon that had personality despite not bringing a lot of depth to the sandbox, mechanically speaking. It has a fan base that misses the weapon dearly. so. Perhaps it's time 343 dusted off the old weapon, gave it a new model, and found a way to bring it back into the combat loop for Halo Infinite or whatever the next Halo game will be. All I know for sure is, I wouldn't be opposed to the idea. It's time for my impression of a carbine. Plop. How was that?